Hey Sugar Snaps, welcome to the Textile Indie YouTube channel. In this tutorial, I'm sharing how to work with circular needles, how to do the knit and purl stitch in a textured pattern. We're going to go over the seed stitch and the basket weave stitch. I'm going to walk you through a cowl knitting pattern using those stitches. So this will be a basic loop. It could be called an infinity scarf, but we make it a little bit tighter. So hence the cowl. Something to take into consideration as you start this project is try to do a center pull where you find the yarn in from the center of your yarn ball. It's a lot easier to pull from the center than having your yarn roll around your room or in a basket or bowl or something if you're pulling from the outside. In last week's tutorial, I shared an Ecodyne on wool yarn. I'm going to use some of this yarn for the cowl today so you'll get to see the eco printed wool color texture as well as the knit stitch texture. So it's going to be a very textured cowl project. Yay, now we're ready to get started. The first step is to cast on stitches. So I have my ball of yarn here and I'm going to use the long tail cast on. It's my favorite cast on. I have videos on the basics in knitting, a cast on, a knit stitch, and a purl stitch tutorial. I'll put those in the description below. So first I'm going to start out with this slip knot, slide this onto my knitting needle, and then using my thumb and forefinger, I'm going to slide that into the space between the two pieces of yarn and I'm pulling from the yarn bowl on one ball on one side and the um, long tail that I just created to separate the two and then I'm going to catch the loop on the front of my thumb, catch the yarn on my forefinger, pull that through this loop, release off my thumb and then pull tight. And I want the spacing in between each stitch to be nice and even so I'm going to pull snugly, not super tight, but snug so that it fits nicely and then do this for each stitch so that they're evenly spaced. For today's pattern, we're going to cast on 120 stitches. So sometimes I like to cast on a bunch of stitches and then go back and start counting. When you do go in to count all your stitches, count them twice just to ensure that you have the right number of stitches. It can be easy to get lost as you're counting and kind of miscount. Now we're working with double pointed needles, which means that they're connected in the center with this cord. So we're going to work in the round and connect the two ends together by knitting around in a circle, which means that for this project at least, we're only knitting on one side of the fabric or the outside of the fabric. So here, I'm going to situate my ball of yarn so that I can pull from it easily. I'll start out with some excess that I can pull on. You're going to make sure that the stitches are not twisted by coming around and sending these Around, making sure they're all laid out flat and depending on how stiff your cord is that can, this can be more or less difficult and for my project there there is a wrong and a right side for what I'm choosing to do so the wrong side is where these little pearls or the curves that imitate the pearl stitch are and the side that we want is actually opposite of the way my needles want to curve right now but we want to start on the side that could be considered the knit side that has little V's if you pull away the edge here or it's just loops across rather than loops up and over. So I'm going to rearrange my stitches so that they are turned the right direction. So stretch out your needles and untwist your stitches so they're all curved downwards to make sure they're pointed in the same direction all the way around. like so. So all my stitches are down facing to the bottom of the cable or to the inside of this ring. So then the yarn is coming off my right hand needle and we're going to do this first row is going to be a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and we're going to be building the first several inches of the cowl in seed stitch. So to set up for that, we're going to knit the first stitch. So bring your needle from your right hand, bring it to the far side of this first stitch and send the needle to the back, wrap the yarn around that back needle and then catch that loop and pull it to the front. This is a basic knit stitch. If you want a further tutorial, I do have a video on that. You can check that out in the description below. For the next stitch, we're going to purl. So bring your yarn forward so that now it's in front of your work. Bring your right hand needle through the next stitch on your left needle and then bring the yarn around that front needle, pull the loop back and then drop that previous stitch. So that's a purl stitch. So now we're gonna send the yarn back once again and knit this stitch. Knit, 
make sure to drop the stitch off the end there and then come around bring the yarn to the front and purl now this first row may be a little bit tight as you start to establish your gauge and how tight you're going to stitch so be patient and continue working knit and purl around until you reach this tail so once i have knit into this stitch right here that will cue me that i've gone around the circular needles once now I'm coming to the end of this row. My tail is right here, so I need to knit up until this stitch right here. So I'm going to continue the knit purl pattern by purling here and then knit, purl, and then knit. So that is one round right there. I'm going to create a little stitch marker. I have this scrap of yarn. Obviously you can use beautiful nice stitch markers or actual stitch markers if you have them handy. I am using all of mine up right now so I'm going to use this as an alternative. So I'm going to put this over my needle and what the stitch marker is indicating is that this is the point where one loop around is completed. So we're going to be working around in a circle, but we do need to know where we've started and ended each round so that we can make adjustments for the following row. So now with this next row, row two, this first stitch was a knit stitch, but for our pattern, for a seed stitch pattern, any stitch that was a knit stitch for this next row is going to be a purl stitch. Any stitch that was a purl stitch is going to be a knit stitch. So we're basically taking the knit one, purl one, and we're swapping it. So we're going to do purl one, knit one. So I'll purl this first stitch, knit the next stitch, purl, knit, purl. And now you can begin to see just a tiny little bit of that seed stitch pattern starting to form. There's the knit stitch here and then the purl stitch above it. Keep going until you come back to your stitch marker and we're going to continue working in seed stitch for about two inches. I've come around, done my second row. The seed stitch is starting to show up, which is really fun. I love how non-curly the seed stitch edge looks. The fabric doesn't curl up like it would if we were doing a knit stitch on one side and a purl stitch on the other or a stockinette stitch. So once you've finished that second round, transfer your stitch marker. This is where it landed. Transfer it to this next needle and kind of get that out of your way. And we're going to continue knitting. So check where you're at. This is the beginning of the row. So we, that first row was a knit first. The second row was a purl first. So now third row, we're going to knit. So bring your yarn to the back, knit, and then purl, knit, and then purl. So there is that pattern forming again, a little bit more. We're going to continue knitting several rows in the seed stitch. You can check the description below for a knitting pattern with the written instructions for this pattern and follow along with that. We're going to continue in this beautiful seed stitch until we have two inches of seed stitch here. So you measure from this edge right here up and then I'll come back and I'll show you the basket weave stitch. I'm very excited to show this stitch. Okay, I'll see you after we've built two inches of the seed stitch. Here is the two inches of my seed stitch. The colors coming out nicely in this pattern. Now we're going to get started with the basket weave stitch for the center section of our cowl. For the second section of the cowl, we're going to do basket weave stitch. So this first row, we're going to knit all the way around. So continue with your knit stitch instead of alternating knit and purl like we did with the seed stitch. This full row is going to be just plain knit stitch. So knit around until you meet your stitch marker once again, and then we'll stop for row number two. Once you've knitted your first row around, make sure to transfer the stitch marker and then we're ready to start the basket weave pattern. So what we're going to start out with is knitting one, purling five, and knitting two. So we'll knit one stitch, bring the yarn to the front, purl five, one, two, three, four, five. 
bring the yarn to the back, knit three. Bring the yarn to the front, purl five. Yarn to the back, knit three. And we'll do the purl five, knit three, all the way around until we get to the last few stitches before the stitch marker. You're going to knit the last two stitches of this row and then the next two rows you're going to repeat this same process where you knit the first stitch, purl five, knit three, purl five, knit three, all the way around and you'll do that for the next two rows. So you end up with three rows mimicking this pattern. Now you can begin to see the texture of the basket weave. We have our knit stitches and our purl stitches and this is what would be a basic rib stitch now we're going to do two rows of knit stitch. So knit all the way around until you meet your stitch marker and then do that one more time. So two full turns around in plain knit stitch. I've knitted two rows here all the way around so you can see the texture of the purl knit sections. Now we're going to weave three rows following this pattern. You're going to bring your yarn to the front. Start by purling two, one, two, Bring your yarn to the back, knit three. Bring your yarn to the front, purl five. One, two, three, four, and five. Yarn to the back, knit three. So you'll continue doing a knit three, purl five until you get to the last few stitches. The last three stitches of this row are going to be purl. So purl one, two, and three. Switch your stitch marker over. And now for the next two rows, these first two stitches are purl. Then we knit three, purl five, knit three all the way around. Now with the stitch repeat, you can see the basket weave pattern. Now, once you've completed the three rows of purl five, knit three repeat, we're going to knit one row. So bring your yarn to the back, knit one row all the way around. And this knit row separates the rows of purl and knit in the ribbed pattern here. So we're creating a little space between that gives the illusion of another row of basket weave. So we're kind of creating a space that then separates the next section of basket weave and defines it as, as a section of the texture. And then you're going to start back up with your knit one stitch and then purl five stitches, knit three stitches, purl five, knit three, purl five, knit three, purl five, all the way around until you have completed this row. And then you're going to repeat that same pattern two more times. So you have a total of three rows in this pattern repeat. Once you've done the third section of the basket weave pattern, you're going to do another row of knit to separate this section. So knit all the way around your loop. So continue knitting in the basket weave pattern and you can check the description below for a written version of that if you want to a reminder or watch the video back to go through the steps once again. And you'll we weave, <laughs> you're going to knit that section as wide as you like. Remembering that we're going to do two inches at the end of the seed stitch once again. So we'll have seed stitch border on either side sandwiching the basket weave section in the middle. So for mine, I'm going to do seven sections of the basket weave. I think an odd number looks really nice. It flows really nice and stop at seven and then do the next two inches of seed stitch for that border. And then we'll go over binding off. So here's that basket weave pattern. I have seven sections. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I've done one knit row all the way around. So this row right here against the needle is a knit row all the way around. Now we're going to start the seed stitch once again. So as a reminder, that is knit one, purl one all the way around. So you're get, again, getting that practice in sending the yarn back and forth to create your knit and your purl stitches. We're going to do this knit one, purl one, all the way around for one row, and then we'll come back and do a purl one, knit one, so that we offset the pattern and get that nice seed stitch texture. 
And here is the final two inches of the seed stitch. Now I'm going to show you how to complete the bind off for this. I have two inches up here that I finished off in seed stitch, so we're ready to bind off. So now I can remove that stitch marker and my bind off is going to be a knitting bind off. So I'll knit two stitches and then I'm going to take the first stitch that I knitted, bring it up and over that second stitch like so. And I want to knit fairly loosely so that I don't end up with a super tight edge. And I'm knitting one stitch and then bringing that, that first stitch that's on the needle up and over the next stitch. So we're binding off with this simple bind off all the way around, just taking this first stitch that's on the needle, lifting it off, and you'll still have stitches behind where you're working. You'll just work forward as if you're knitting the fabric normally, but then going back and lifting this stitch over and off like so. Keeping your loops fairly loose, so that you don't end up with a really tight opening in your cowl. To finish off the final stitches, you'll continue to knit the stitch, bring that stitch over, and we'll do the same thing for these last two stitches until you have one stitch left. Then you can pull your needles out, create that loop a little bit bigger, and then mine, I'm going to break my yarn so that I have a nice length of tail and then send this end through the loop, pull it through, and then gently tighten that down so that I can then weave in the tails here on this end. And there is the cowl knitted. Our last few steps are to weave in the tails and then block this. Well, we finished wonderful work knitting your cowl. If you're new to knitting, congratulations. If you're an old hat at knitting, well done. I look forward to hearing in the comments below what color you chose and how the knitting process went. Like this video because it supports my channel and it helps us do what we do here at Textile Indie, which is bring inspirational and informational content in the fiber arts world. Subscribe to my email list to get a full digest of all the content that we produce. Every two weeks we send you an email with blog posts, YouTube videos, Instagram posts, all the goodies that we've posted in the last two weeks, or at least the highlights. They're all highlights. What am I talking about? And we'd love to connect with you there. There's the link in the description below to sign up for that email list. Thanks so much for watching. It's always a pleasure hanging out with you. Until next week, happy making. Bye.